Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Real, honest, entertaining, live. DBL starts right now. Welcome to DBL. It is Thursday, January 7th. I'm Tori and I'm here with Jeff and Brandon. Hello. Lindsay, of course, joins us from home. Lindsay, how are you today? Hey, how's it going? Uh, it's going okay. Let's let's all be honest here and speak om openly like adults. So many of us woke up today with a pit in our stomachs, and it was a day like no other in this nation's history. By now, we've all seen video like this of angry mob of extremists storming the nation's capital. Lawmakers crouching down, hiding behind chairs, fearing for their lives. They were escorted, some in their own gas masks, from the House and Senate chamber and brought to secret and secure locations where they waited for hours 
hours while the Capitol was cleared by police. Here's how some lawmakers reacted. At this hour, our democracy is under an unprecedented assault, unlike anything we've seen in modern times. An assault on the Citadel of Liberty, the Capitol itself. We must and we will show to the country and indeed to the world that we will not be diverted from our duty, that we will respect our responsibility to the Constitution and to the American people. To those who wreaked havoc in our capital today, you did not win. Violence never wins. Freedom wins. And this is still the people's house. So today, as the nation picks up the pieces and begins the process of figuring out where we go from here, we're going to do what we always do here at DBL. We're going to talk from the heart. How did this make you feel? How did, was this allowed to happen? And DBL Nation, we want to hear from you. So please, please write in. I got so many of you. I've never heard from so many of you last night. Thank you for writing me. It helped me get through this. Please tell us what you are thinking. Uh, Lindsay, thoughts? I mean, I was disgusted watching the TV last night. To me, this is a national embarrassment. There was nothing patriotic about what we saw. And I think it was a display of how far people will go to protect white privilege. And what I mean by that is that you have leaders who passively didn't call the National Guard. The president passively did not call the National Guard on these people that were borderline terror, performing terrorism as a constitutional duty was being performed. And so when I look at conservatives and Republicans that say, hey, listen, we are fighting for what, what we believe was a rigged election and that perpetual lie continuously go on and on and then see these Trump supporters go down to the Capitol, even KKK members, you know, people who are just completely terrorist, in my opinion, in this country and go down and sabotage some of our leaders trying to perform their constitutional duties. I look at the way they were treated and the National Guard was not called until Pence stepped in. And then I look at Kenosha, Wisconsin, when the National Guard was protectively called because leaders thought that black people were going to riot down there and actually nothing happened. And so it's funny because these same people that say Colin Kaepernick kneeling during a football game is un-American are the same people that will rush down to this Capitol and try to perform one of the most un-American things I've ever seen in my life. I think black people are not surprised but they are disgusted and still annoyed and infuriated because we constantly are protesting to protect the fact that black people are being killed every day with not any merit and no reason. But white people went down to the Capitol and said, listen, we're protesting because we lost, because we're sore losers. And so it, I think overall, everybody is just standing by in awe of how disgusted this is. And I don't think that it's the entire Republican Party. I don't think that it's everybody that ever voted for Trump. But there's no way that you can detach yourself at this point and say that you thought that, that message that he sent yesterday was appropriate that you thought that him continuously pushing the lies that have been disproven in many levels at many high courts, that we are not, that Joe Biden and Kamala are not the next leaders of this country is appropriate at the 11th hour, this close to Inauguration Day. I think overall we're in a terrible spot. And when you look at it, it puts a glaring light on how racism still exists in our country. I mean, if black people went up to that Capitol and kicked down the doors and sat in Nancy Pelosi's office with their foot on the, on the stool and took things out of there and looted, we would be dead. We would be dead. And so that's just a fact if you just look at the history of this country. And so I watched that last night and I was just like, wow, this is disgusting. And anybody who can't see that really needs a wake up call. And to think about how you want to bring this country towards moving forward, because we have to make some decisions on how we're going to come together and actually act like we're not a third world country. I, I first of all, very well said. And the anger I think that you explain, exploded with is something we all feel. I want to make sure we tell our audience we see the Black Lives Matter and this as two radically opposing uh, responses, and we are clear on that. We are going to have a longer discussion on that, and I want to make clear we are not ignoring that, uh, but I, I want to also move on to also what, let's say, the Politico said, like Trump, we have to have peace, as Lindsay said, so go home. We love you. You're very special. You've seen what happens. You see the way others are treated that are so bad and so evil. Uh, go home and go home in peace. Just so you know, uh, he has been banned now, our president, from Twitter, from Facebook, Facebook indefinitely uh, and from Instagram. I think for Twitter, it's been for about 12 days. Uh, Jeff, it, Lindsay feels the anger. What did you feel when you well, saw I don't, don't want to, Lindsay feels the way she feels and I don't want to contest that, right? Usually I'm trying to contest that and give a different side to this show and for the audience out there. 
I don't think there isn't another side. Not that I don't think there is not another side to this story, right? I'm not going to egg Lindsay on. I don't want to go there right now. I have some things that I want to counter with her. But today's not today. Today's the day to feel how you feel. Today's the day for Americans, okay? I don't want to get into details. I, I, I actually want to hear you speak, Tori, because you have pages of notes. This is not what you live for because I could imagine how you feel today because you take Washington, D.C. to your heart. So how are you feeling from your heart today? Um, it was a very sad day. I'll be super honest with you. My family's five miles from the White House. Um, it was disgraceful. And the way I felt about this mob, and I'm not scared, as Lindsay said, they're almost like terrorists, to call them terrorists, uh, that uh, traitors overtook the people's house yesterday. We had a mob of traitorous people take over yesterday. You spit in the face of the Constitution. You spit in the founders' face that created law and order so that these people could give their constitutional duty. You actually spit in the face of troops who are defending that Constitution. Not only that, I want a full investigation into why the Capitol Police let such an enormous security catastrophically fail at this level. I'm not going to bring back what Lindsay said, but I have to admit, Black Lives Matter was ready and we weren't for this and we all knew it was going to be a big day. So I have questions for the D.C. police, for the Capitol Police. I have questions for who let Gates in for selfies being taken. We all saw what we saw. But I would like to say at the end, what happened? This traitorous mob lost and democracy won. Not only that, they cemented the vote and objections were canceled. You failed. You failed miserably. And Biden is president and a transfer of power has happened. So it was a lot of noise. It was too much noise. We need an investigation into why there was so much noise and why they were allowed for hours to be on the Capitol steps. Hours, but at the same time, Let's talk about democracy prevailing. Early this morning, Congress certified the election of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Vice President Mike Pence presided over the final moments with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi by his side and the two bumped elbows when it was all done. After seeing Congress come back after everything that happened yesterday and complete the people's work and do it for the most part together, a lot of people are wondering, can and will the nation unite? Brandon. We talk about <clears throat> healing all the time. Anytime something happens, we always talk about, oh, the nation needs to heal, the nation needs to heal. And Jeff, we talk about these deep conversations. In something like this, it has to go deeper. It, we're talking, and, and Lindsay touched on race, it has to go deeper because these are the, some of these people are the same people who believe that women shouldn't make just as much as a man. Some of those people who be believe that LGBTQ uh, people shouldn't have rights. Some of those people, Jeff, wouldn't allow me and you to be friends. Me, you, and Al talk football on the, on the weekends through our group chats and have fun. You've, it, we're, we're at a point now where I'm glad that the politics, our democracy still prevailed and our politicians made their speeches. But you know what? It's not going to be on them, Jeff, to, to heal. It's going to be on me and you. It's going to be on relationships like me and yours, Tories, Al's and yours, Lindsay's and, and yours. Because the more we have this conversation, the more we get deeper, the more people are going to really truly understand each other. And what we all saw yesterday, just like you said, that's hate. That's hate. No one's standing for that. Especially as an American. My grandparents fought. My grandfather fought, grandparents fought it for this country. Not for that. Sam Shocker's grandfather, our very own Sam Shocker's grandfather, fought for this country, not for that. So when we talk about healing, we're not leaving this one up to the politicians, America. This one has to happen within these Facebook groups, on our social media, and in our everyday lives, because it's going to be put on us. Well, yeah. let me get to the comments here, because a lot of you are writing in. And again, I want to emphasize that you failed. This democracy has worked, and our transfer of power has happened. I can't emphasize that enough, because a lot of you wrote me and said, Tori, talk me off the edge. I feel like we're in a coup, and we were, and we succeeded, and the traitors failed. Uh, this is from Pamela on Facebook. It's a terrible act. All the violence in this year has been terrible. Cheryl says, at first I was ashamed to be a United States Air Force veteran, mm -hmm. but then I stepped back, and I realized this does not represent my America, just like what you were saying. She says, I took the oath of the office to support and defend the Constitution of the United States, and what happened yesterday was a disgrace and a slap in the face to that oath. Alexander said the world watched and laughed. That is something else we need to discuss, the global community. You don't think China was watching? You don't think Iran was watching? We look so weak. 
we look so vulnerable and stupid and silly and arguing with ourselves. That's how sad that was. Lydia says angry, very un-American, and Jay just responds with sickening. We want to thank Cheryl for her service, obviously, as well. Tough day, guys. Very tough day. I'm glad we're talking about it and being honest about how we feel, and I'm glad, again, democracy prevailed. Coming up on DBL, we're continuing the conversation about yesterday's riot at the Capitol with you guys, the viewers. We're sharing more of those comments next in DBL Take, so don't go away. We're breaking down two of the most asked questions online right now. First, can the vice president invoke the 25th Amendment? According to our Congressional Research Service report, Section 4 of the 25th Amendment allows the vice president to, quote, assume the powers and duties of the office as acting president. Now, it only requires that the vice president have approval from the majority of the cabinet, but if the president challenges, then two-thirds of Congress would have to approve. So technically, yes, the vice president can invoke the 25th Amendment. But it's never happened in U.S. history, and that same Congressional Research Service report indicates that the amendment was, quote, not intended to facilitate the removal of an unpopular or failed president. Second question, was this the first time the U.S. Capitol was stormed and seized since 1814? A lot of claims out there about this. Now, while congressional records show minor attacks in the last century, none of them involved more than a handful of people. The kind of large-scale breach and takeover of the Capitol we saw Wednesday hasn't happened since 1814 when British troops stormed Washington and burned the Capitol. So this claim is also verified. Now, folks, there are tons of claims and rumors online right now. If you see something you want us to check out, send us an email. With your Verify, I'm Jason Puckett. DBL, the FBI is on the hunt for the rioters who were in the nation's capital yesterday, with more arrests expected to happen today. So this has many Americans concerned about the future of our country, leaving many to question how the storming happened in the first place. DBL Nation, we want to hear from you. What's your take on yesterday's riot at the Capitol? I'm going to read your comments and we're going to push it off to our uh, panel here. Lindsay, the first comments for you. Michael from Facebook says, I hope that this will be a rock bottom for our country and that we can come together to bring back truth, civility, and honor. What do you think? I mean, there's been so many rock bottoms throughout 2020 as we've seen um, the different difficulties that we've all been facing from COVID to race relations to uh, things that some leaders were doing and saying. And I just really, you know, as much as I understand this could be a wake up call, I'm like, you know, this is so extreme right. to be the one wake up call. But I do hope we go up from here because going any lower is, I think everybody was already disgusted. So going any lower seems like something that's just not possible for the United States of America. I agree. Now here's the next comment, Jeff. Pamela from Instagram says the world is watching. It's a shame and embarrassing. She's right. Unfortunately, she's right. But listen, I don't want to diminish anyone's anger here because I understand everyone's angry, but I hate to be that guy to say we have to be optimistic as a country to know that this terrible thing that happened yesterday strangely has brought us together. I feel like even Republicans in the House are saying this is Mr. Trump. This is unacceptable. Lindsey Graham said enough is enough. He said I'm out. I'm out. I'm enough out. is enough. People are putting their foot down. They're not standing for it. 
we know what's right. We know what's wrong as Americans. Again, this is a small percentage of a country, a small minority that's doing wrong. You're going to have bad in any situation, in any part of the world. Us as Americans, the majority of us, know this was wrong, know this was terrible, and we need to be optimistic about where we're headed as a country. Jeff, always with the positivity. I so needed that today. Brandon, Mel from Facebook says, how is this different <clears throat> from tearing down historical statues? Wrong is wrong. Uh, Mel, Tori. Yesterday, and you can research this online, I'm sure Google has images up, there was a man with a Confederate flag in our uh, nation's capital, in our state capital. Those historical uh, statues that are being torn down are being torn down because it represents that flag. And you see what that flag just did to our, our democratic republic. So as Jeff, I'm staying positive. I'm ready to have conversations. I'm ready to go get a beer with you and we talk about, hey, what more can we do? You know, because we have this, this platform. What, Tori, same thing, what more can we do but at the same time I cannot sit here and try and equate uh, those two fair I'll take the next comment and from Facebook says this was an assault on democracy we should all be concerned that something like this would even be possible yeah it was uh, it, to me it was just bizarre that it lasted so long and that everything was allowed to continue but again I'm gonna go with my friend Jeff here and end with what happened democracy happened they failed we won heart threads is next we'll be right back it's Welcome back to DBL. Today's Heart Threads is all about helping out your neighbors. Watch how an act of kindness spoke volumes when a woman was about to lose her home. This woman's neighbor helped her pay rent just in time. Things have been tough for Barbara Gillard ever since her husband died. Michael Gillard died unexpectedly three years ago from a septic gallbladder. I just felt lost. Barbara fell behind rent as she struggled to make ends meet, resorting to food banks to get enough to eat. She finally found a job as a home health aide, but her first paycheck wasn't going to arrive in time. Before she got paid, Barbara's landlord sent an eviction note. So she posted on Nextdoor, asking if anyone knew of services to help. Barbara's neighbor, Mike Cuffield, saw the post and offered to help. He offered to pay her owed rent so she could stay in her home. My first thought was how brave this, this woman was to reach out like that. There are angels in Noblesville, and God put them angels in Noblesville after I reached out to him. We needed that today. We'll be right back. 
promotional consideration is brought to you by Hello. Welcome back to DBL. Earlier, Steph showed me some amazing products at even better prices. Here's this week's DBL Deal Blast, presented by MorningSave.com. All right, what do you have for us today, Stephanie? It is the Viva Spa whole body vibration machine with built-in Bluetooth speaker and resistant bands. So normally this is $300 pretty spenny, but we've got it for our viewers for $129. What a steal. Okay, next it is the Kiehl's. Oh, I love Powerful Kiehl's. Powerful strength line reducing eye brightening concentrate. So this eye treatment helps brighten and smooth for younger looking eyes. Love it. Now, normally it's $50, smells amazing. Uh, now it's only 25, yes. saving 50%, Tori. I used to sell peels. My, it's unbelievable, the scent, it. the smell. It's very sort of natural ingredients. Everyone should buy that. And um, this is the two pack Vega protein and energy coffee powder Whoa. with 
a Smart Shake Bundle. Wow. So this is designed for people or couples that are on the go and want a little bit of extra energy throughout the day. Okay. So normally these are $80. But we've got two for 24, which means our viewers are going to save 70%, Tori. So, love this. Nice. Big fan of this one. Last but definitely not least, Tori, it is the Bagalini Crossbody Bag. Ooh. So, it comes in your choice of style. We've got the Denver or the El Paso. Ooh. So, the Den so, normally these are $60, but we've got them for our viewers for $20, which is a steal and because you're saving 67%. All right, guys, you saw Gorgeous. the deals. Head on over to MorningSave.com to snag these amazing deals at the lowest prices. You can even just visit MorningSave.com on your smartphone. It can't be easier. Steph, thank you so much. All right, we got a lot of comments coming in, more than we ever have, so I so appreciate you all writing in. Uh, here's an honest one from Michael D. Williams III. It's very hard to be positive right now. I'm normally filled with optimism. I'm very sorry. I don't have it right now, but I appreciate your encouraging words, and that's a really fair assessment. Um, Christina Adams says, did Trump pardon himself and his family? Can he still? He can still pardon, if, as long as he's president, he has all the pardoning powers that he uh, constitutionally is allowed to have. And finally says, why would people riot like this knowing they're gonna lose and that people will die? I wondered if either of you wanted to speak on that or Lindsay, why would they do this knowing they, it wouldn't work? Linz? I mean, I can't speak to that like lunatic behavior. Um, what I'm more curious about is, you know, I have friends that work in the D.C. area that were by executives of companies warned to stay home and stay right. safe. And so that the, the leaders of our country that were voting on something very important um, were not protected in the way that they should have been. It's really scary. And you, you talk about the silver lining, how they all came together and still stayed up all night and got that uh, pushed through. It just shows us that we do have to do better and move forward. And we don't have to try to explain what they did, but we have to figure out how we can continue to be great. Absolutely, and um, thank God democracy prevailed. That's right, DBL's new every day. We'll see you same time, same place tomorrow. Bye, guys.